More than two millennia ago, the forces of destiny choreographed a tale of expansive empires, remarkable men, and enduring legacies. A tale precariously perched on the scales of time, shifting the balance between dawn and dusk. Dawn for some, dusk for others. Our tale begins in an era when two ancient powers dominated the world. Rome, a power-drunk city in the West with dreams of world domination, and Carthage a thriving economic power whose to the south armed with a formidable naval force and an unwavering will. Amidst the tumult of war and peace, our lens peels away layers of time to introduce one extraordinary man, Hannibal Barca, the audacious commander of Carthage. But before we dive into it, there are a couple things that stand to be addressed. In this documentary, Hannibal Barca will be depicted as a black man with melanated skin. No one can say, with certainty, how Hannibal really looked. Some coins, from the time period, depict Hannibal with distinctly African features, while others from the time period depict him with European features. Since Carthage was located in Africa, and scholars agree that Hannibal was definitely not European, I chose to represent him with African features. The tomb of a high priestess from the elite ruling class was discovered, and upon evaluation of the remains, it was determined that she had African features. This is not proof that all Carthaginians were so-called black people. Not even close. It does show that dark skin or African features wouldn't have excluded someone from being part of Carthage's nobility. My experience is that places engaging in a significant amount of trade tend to be beautifully diverse. If you take issue with the way Hannibal is depicted in this video, it would be wise to re-evaluate yourself as you may suffer from white supremacy. But please continue to picture Hannibal however you see him in your mind's eye. The truth remains that we'll never truly know the shade of his skin or the color of his eyes will never get to gaze upon a definitive image of one of the most influential military commanders history has ever known. His campaigns against Rome, however, are legendary. Bold as a lion, Hannibal's heart beat to the tempo of one single ambition, the conquest of Rome. From the cradle, he nourished this ambition within himself, fed it with dreams of battlefield glory and victory parades. Amid the warm hues of valor, and the monochromatic scheme of destruction. Let us embark on a journey, retracing Hannibal's indelible steps through the spirals of history. Born into the esteemed Barca family, Hannibal inherited not only his father Hamilcar's hatred for Rome, but also his dream of Carthaginian dominance. Hannibal's upbringing was defined by a single promise, made before an altar with his father as witness. He uttered a solemn vow to dedicate his life to the downfall of Rome. Carrying this legacy of enmity and vengeance, Hannibal's ambitions grew with him into adulthood. His plan was daring, almost absurd in its novelty and magnitude. He planned not a direct incursion by sea, as was conventional, but rather a land invasion via the treacherous Alps. It was a path fraught with dangers unseen, an unpredictable terrain inhospitable to man and beast alike. But such audacious were the strokes of Hannibal's strategic canvas. The journey was termed impossible by many, illogical by even the most seasoned strategists. But the gleam in Hannibal's eyes saw not the challenge, but an opportunity, a battlefield where he could outsmart and outmaneuver Rome. Hannibal stood at the cusp of war, a campaign that would etch his name into the annals of history. Gathering the strength of Carthage behind him, he began to marshal his forces. He trained seasoned infantrymen, robust cavalries, and an assembly of towering war elephants. He knew well that crossing the Alps would not be an easy task. The journey was filled with arduous tasks of maneuvering through perilous paths, sparing no room for error or hesitation. Every phase was organized meticulously, from supplies to medical care. No stone was left unturned. Alliances were brokered to assure steady supply routes and reinforcements on the long march to Rome. 
His officers motivated them with speeches inspiring camaraderie, unity, and resolve. Against the smoldering sunsets of Carthage, the great army prepared for one of the most daring military campaigns in history. Day by day, they marched closer to their destination and their destiny. Yet their toughest test lay ahead, to cross the godforsaken peaks of the mighty Alps, a natural fortress that kept Rome safe from the land-based invasions of the north. Little did they know that the hardest part of their journey had only just begun. The passage through the Alps, a voyage framed by a wall of unforgiving white and blue, was a daunting endeavor. Engineered by nature to be a fortress, the formidable mountain range presented an extreme test of human endurance. Its hostile raw elements seemed to conspire to keep invaders at bay. Winds whipped through every crevice, bringing stinging snow and ice, turning treacherous paths into slippery trails of uncertainty. Hazardous conditions were exacerbated by unexpected landslides, engulfing men and beasts in an avalanche of remorseless stone and snow. Each step brought with it a new challenge, a fresh threat. But nature's wrath was not the only antagonist on the road to Rome. Passing through these chilling heights meant crossing the territories of tribes not amicable to Carthage or its ambitious leader. Hostile tribes roamed these lands, notorious for their seething hatred of any foreign trespasser. These tribes unexpectedly ambushed Hannibal's already strained forces, adding to the collateral damage of their perilous journey through the precipitous mountain trails. Their exploits in this demonic cold offered a chilling spectacle, a sinister dance of survival against a backdrop of the vast, unfeeling mountains, Cape. And yet they pressed on, battered and bruised, certain that yielding to the Alps meant dooming Carthage's quest for glory. As they threaded their path across rugged landscapes, it became increasingly clear that the journey was far more than a physical trek. It was a test of metal, a crucible that would forge leaders of ordinary men. At the helm of this journey was Hannibal Barca, a man whose strength laid not in his physical prowess but, more markedly, in the strategic finesse of his mind and his unparalleled ability to inspire his men. With each inhospitable turn of the mountain trail, with each unforeseen adversity, Hannibal was there, planning, guiding, instilling hope. His actions conveyed more than mere commands from a superior officer. They were the reflections of his innovative military mind. Even when his war elephants, the famed shock troops of the Carthaginian army, struggled against the harsh terrains, Hannibal found a way to guide them through. He sculpted out solutions with unwavering determination. He led by the virtue of empathy, resilience, and strategic acumen. His leadership was instrumental in ensuring not just the survival of his men, but also their relentless will to conquer. They withstood extreme weather, deadly landslides, and hostile tribal forces under his guidance. Fierce, tenacious, and unyieldingly optimistic, Hannibal proved himself to be the linchpin holding together an expedition that teetered on the edge of doom every moment. Every bend they made it past was evidence of his exemplary leadership. Under the shadow of Hannibal's leadership, the hope of Carthaginians flourished, driving them closer towards their monumental goal, Rome. In one of history's most extraordinary tales of perseverance, Hannibal's army miraculously survived their treacherous journey through the Alps. Each step forward had been a dance with death, with the chilling wind singing tales of doom. With quiet strength, they stared unflinchingly into the eyes of adversity. The weary soldiers, guided by their stalwart leader, faced the endless hardships that the treacherous landscape offered. Battered and bruised, nerves frayed from cold and fear, they withstood nature's barrage. Yet there was no retreat, no surrender, only a collective iron will to advance. Frankly, survival seemed improbable. Victory, a distant dream, blurred under the heavy snowfall. But there it was, 
an extraordinary spectacle for all who beheld it. Hannibal's soldiers descending from the freezing heights, their silhouettes against the white, an unspoken testament of their incredible tenacity. One can only imagine the joy coursing through their veins as they left behind the mountains that had challenged their very existence. Emerging from the snow-clad mountains, they were a testament to their leaders' strategic brilliance and their own resilient spirit. Having braved the onslaught of nature's fury and the lurking shadows of hidden enemies, they prepared to face their ultimate adversary. Before them lay the plains of Italy. Just within reach was Rome. Conquest was within sight. Beyond the unforgiving heights of the white-capped Alps, nestled in the sun-kissed valleys of the Italian plains, lies the next stage of our story. Hannibal's throng of fiercely loyal soldiers are amassed, their warrior spirits hardened by the biting cold they've survived. Their hearts echo with anticipation, beating to rhythms of war drums. Each gaze is fixed on one goal, one city, Rome. The landscape once a picture of peace, now a precarious prelude to battle. A storm brews, a deluge poised to engulf Rome in a wave that bears the wrath of Carthage, forged and unyielding in the crucible of their journey through the Alps. The soldiers, each a darkened silhouette against the crimson hue of dawn, are a representation of what they have endured. Armors shine, like their resolve, undimmed by hardships faced. Weapons clang, akin to their unbroken spirits, eager for retribution. Victory seems within their grasp, their eyes mirror unwavering faith in their commander. Not a shred of doubt lingers. They have braved the harshest of elements, human and nature alike. Rome is just another adversary, to be defeated and dominated. Rome poses its own challenges nevertheless, superior numbers, home ground advantage, and fortified defenses. Hannibal inspects his troops, determination etched onto his weathered face. In his eyes, each soldier sees a reflection of themselves, battle-worn but unbowed. Their moment of reckoning nears with each beat of the war drums as the sun sets on the eve of what promises to be an epic conflict. The day of reckoning descends upon the two mighty powers on the bloody plains of Cannae. The sun rises, casting eerie light over two armies that would redefine the course of history. Hannibal the ingenious Carthaginian, against Rome's numerical strength, a hailed empire on the brink of a humiliating debacle. Despite being vastly outnumbered, Hannibal's resolve remains steady, his daring tactical brilliance taking center stage. He deploys an audacious, high-risk crescent formation. It was a military tactic unheard of, where he appears as weak at the center and strong on the flanks, luring the Romans into a deadly trap. As the Romans charge with devastating ferocity, they find themselves encased in a vice-like grip. Disorientated and lured deep into the crescent trap, their numerical supremacy suddenly becomes their Achilles' heel. Revealing his masterstroke, Hannibal launches a full-scale attack from the sides and rear. His cavalry charges from the flanks while infantry forces swarm in from behind locking the Romans in a constricting snare. In a terrifying spectacle of double envelopment, the Romans are trapped and decimated, their forces fragmented, their spirit crushed. A bloodied canvas of brave warriors falling like dominoes lay scattered across Cannae's harsh terrain. And Hannibal, the artist orchestrating this masterpiece of maneuvers, stands tall amid the chaos. It is indeed his magnum opus, a testament to his military prowess and strategic genius. Against all expectations, Hannibal secures an unprecedented victory at Cannae, changing the face of warfare with his ruthlessness and intellect. The Battle of Cannae was not simply another historical war, but a saga of courage, wits, and innovation that resonates in military schools and amongst strategists even today. The dust of Cannae had barely settled when the scope of the Carthaginian victory started to take shape. 
gaping wounds of loss and betrayal, tormented Rome's once great city. The once mighty eagles of Rome were now pinned under Carthaginian steel, their glamour replaced by a tarnished hue of shame. It was an upset of historic proportions, the domino effect of which would be felt far beyond the immediate battlefield. The ground zero reverberated with lingering echoes of Rome's lament. In her sophisticated corridors of power, the old and young alike whispered Hannibal's name in terror. A profound chill coursed through their strong Roman hearts, for never before had their fortress seemed so vulnerable, their empire shaken to its core. But as Rome nursed wounds deep within its grandeur, reverberations did not halt. Instead, they resonate across the Mediterranean like ripples on a pond, pulling at the loyalties once firmly in the Roman grip. Names of distant kingdoms echoed through Carthaginian camps, newfound allies, turning heads to this rising power. However, the sublime victory evoked an unprecedented change, a change not just limited within geopolitical boundaries or political loyalties, but subtly etched within the psyche of society's histories and cultures that would follow. This was not just a meeting of massive armies, it was the dramatic confrontation of two civilizations, a seismic cultural shift that has shaped our world. The smoke of battle clears over the bloody fields of Cannae. Hannibal, his face etched with the harsh lines of victory and loss, stands amidst his men. His sharp gaze flits towards Rome, a city pulsating with wealth, grandeur, and trembling leaders. The golden opportunity is within grasp, the gates to Rome metaphorically open, the seeds of conquest have been sown and watered with Roman blood, yet that fatal step towards the heart of his enemies stays unclaimed. Was it timidity or wisdom that held his sword? Was he being cautious, aware of Rome's fortified center, or was the integral Carthaginian political machinery at work? Perhaps it was the supply lines stretched thin by miles and miles of hostile terrain, or possibly the dissolution of his own ranks, strained by constant battles and the chill of an Italian winter. Historical pundits have dissected this enigmatic moment from every angle. In spite of an unprecedented victory, Hannibal didn't advance on Rome. This intricate dance of military strategy versus political maneuvering leaves us with more questions than answers. His missed opportunity casts a lengthy shadow on the sands of historical speculation. Amid the tumult of war, a beacon brightens in Rome. Meet Scipio Africanus, a young patrician noble who steps onto Rome's grand stage, not as a pawn, but as a formidable player. The son of a successful general, Scipio bears the mantle of his forebears with an air of destined greatness. He's seen the Roman army punished, seen his country tremble, and now he's determined to shift the tide. A student of warfare, Scipio studies Hannibal's victories meticulously, his strategic mind attempting to decipher the Carthaginian maverick's genius. There's something stirring within him, a growing defiance rooted not in bravado, but calculated courage. He proposes a daring counter. Ignore Hannibal. Attack Carthage directly. The idea is radical, perilous, but Scipio's conviction wins over the Senate. Empowered, he departs Rome for North Africa. The campaign's objective, to strike directly at the heart of Carthage, to rattle their chains and distract their rampaging bull from Roma. So begins a new chapter in the Second Punic War. Hannibal continues to ravage Italy's heartland, but a newer, Fiercer foe looms in his homeland. Scipio proves himself not just another Roman general, but an adversary worthy of Hannibal. The sands of North Africa are shifting, the stage set for a grand reckoning. In the shifting sands of the political landscape, the tide turns against Carthage. As Hannibal prepares for another decisive encounter against Rome on its home soil, his homeland calls. The vibrancy of Italy gradually fades into the distance as he sets his sails towards Carthage. Each crashing wave echoes the threat posed by Scipio's campaigns in North Africa. 
In Carthage, the citizens are gripped with fear. The sight of advancing Roman forces has them teetering on the precipice of desperation. Hannibal's enemies at home have been pursued, his recall from Italy orchestrated. His presences, they believe, will rebalance power once more in their favor. Hannibal faces no easy choices. To leave Italy means to abandon his lifelong ambition. To ignore his homeland's call could mean abandoning his people to a ruthless enemy. But a commander's duty is to his people. Torn between his ambition to conquer Rome and his responsibility towards Carthage, Hannibal takes one last long look at the fading Italian shoreline. So ends the Italian chapter of Hannibal's story. But across the Mediterranean, the respective fates of Rome and Carthage await the decisive battle that looms. This is merely a tactical retreat. For the legendary Hannibal, every end is just another beginning. As the crimson glow of the new dawn breaks over the beleaguered horizon, Hannibal the lion-hearted commander, returns to his homeland. The stakes are now perilously high, for Hannibal is no longer a marauder in the distant lands, but the last glimmer of hope for his beleaguered nation standing on the brink of annihilation. The sands of Africa sprawl beneath him as a sacred battlefield, waiting to host the spectacular endgame of a conflict that has spanned decades. Against him stands Scipio Africanus, Rome's prodigious general, ready to pen the final chapter of this prolonged warfare. While not the personal victory that Hannibal had dreamt of, standing at the apex of this titanic clash, he was still an image of relentless determination, defiance personified against Rome's imperial tyranny. His poise in such tumultuous times belied the fierce passion burning within him, and it is this unquenchable spirit that would immortalize Hannibal as one of the greatest military commanders in the annals of human history. However, destiny had its course, and despite his strategic brilliance and tenacity, the Battle of Zama saw Hannibal face his ultimate defeat. His prowess, though remarkable, proved insufficient against the overwhelming might of Rome. As we delve deeper into the military confrontation, we witness firsthand the relentless vengeance of Rome against a city that dared to defy it. Carthage, the rich North African powerhouse, a city adorned with stunning architecture and brimming with an invigorating blend of cultures and philosophies. This jewel of the Mediterranean, Known for its flourishing marketplaces, libraries echoing with intellectual debates, and harbors bustling with prosperity, was callously razed to the ground by the Roman soldiers. Beneath the vindictive wrath of Rome, Carthage's proud edifices were reduced to ashes, its people massacred or enslaved, and its legacy cruelly exterminated. A civilization that once embodied the epitome of human progress met its disgraceful demise, an irredeemable loss to human history. The destruction of Carthage stands as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of war, where bitterness overpowers empathy and vengeance supersedes justice. The sun sets on the once mighty Hannibal as he is forced into a life of solitary exile. Even in this wilderness, stripped of his power and army, he remains the epitome of dignity and charisma. Faced with capture by his lifelong enemies, he chose to take his life than to kneel to Rome. His suicide swings the pendulum from a pending humiliation to a dramatic, albeit tragic, end. This act reflects his unyielding spirit, choosing the sovereignty of death over Rome's shackles. Yet, death isn't the end of Hannibal for his legacy lives on. His innovative military strategies continue to inspire modern warfare tactics. The tale of his grit and gumption still echo in the narratives of battles, not merely as chronicles of victory and defeat, but as lessons on resilience, leadership, and strategy. To Date, he is a beacon of courage that compels admiration and respect. Through his life, triumphs and tragedies, Hannibal remains eternal, a demigod locked in time, still wagging his war against Rome.
his narrative still making hearts pound and spirits rise in awe. Hannibal, the mighty Carthaginian general, doesn't merely occupy a place in history. His name echoes with an ineffaceable vigor through the long corridors of time. Hannibal Barca's genius lay not just in his incredible strategic military decisions, but also in his intuitive understanding of human nature. See how he considered every possible factor. The landscape, the weather, the state of his own soldiers, the psychology of the enemy. Every move was a culmination of meticulous planning and audacious execution. Examine his tactical maneuver at Cannae an example that truly exhibits the depth of his skill and precision. He had studied his enemy well, understood the Roman psychology, and exploited it to his advantage with sheer brilliance. His double envelopment tactic, where he successfully encircled a larger Roman force, is lauded as a masterpiece of military strategy, even today. Yet the strength of Hannibal was not limited to planning battles. His charisma, courage, and endurance reverberated with his soldiers, inspiring loyalty that knew no bounds. They followed him through treacherous terrains, hostile territories, and under extreme weather conditions with unwavering faith. This was invariably because they saw their leader lead from the front, sharing every hardship, every risk with them. Remembering Hannibal's victories reminds us of his genius as a leader and as a strategist. However, remembering his defeats reminds us of the undying spirit of a man who, until his very last breath, stood as a beacon of unwavering resilience and strength. Historical outcomes are often a pivot point, swinging the pendulum of time in vastly different directions. Imagine then, if Hannibal a man known for his strategic genius and unmatched leadership skills, had indeed brought Rome to its knees. How might the globe have taken shape under Carthaginian hegemony? Without the powerful influences and expansion of the Roman Empire, would the brilliance of Greek culture have spread as widely or as quickly? Perhaps Latin wouldn't have established itself as the linguistic ancestor of numerous modern languages. The economic landscape might have witnessed a dramatic shift, with Carthage's superior maritime prowess leading to an accelerated growth in worldwide trade and commerce. The pages of history might have revered Hannibal not just as Rome's challenger, but as the architect of a new world order. From a socio-political perspective, the known dynamics of conquest and administration might have altered considerably. Perhaps the concept of democracy would have been championed by the Carthaginians instead of the Greeks. These suggestive scenarios bridge the historical past with speculative alternate realities, enriching our understanding while broadening the horizons of historical inquiry. The story of Hannibal thus moves beyond one man's military genius and becomes an exploration of conjectures that could have changed the face of civilization itself. Hannibal Barca a name that still reverberates in the echoes of history. Born into a world dominated by two mighty empires, his tale is one of defiance and undying determination. The coming of age of a boy chasing his father's dreams, pledging an oath of blood and honor against Rome, eventually sprouting into one of the most daunting nightmares Rome ever faced. Through his daring ambition and audacious tactics, he defied all odds and conventional norms, leading an enormous army over the treacherous terrain of the Alps, straight to the doorstep of Rome. Hannibal's military prowess evoked from his ability to bend adversity into opportunity, turning every roadblock into a stepping stone. Inspiring loyalty, forging warriors from men, and courage from desperation. His battles displayed an exemplar of superior strategies that command respect till date. His victories opened up possibilities, creating ripples far beyond his times. Yet war is the cruelest of all arbitrators. Its judgment left Hannibal defeated, not on the battlefield, but through the intricacies of politics, 
his illustrious career overshadowed by a haunting end in foreign lands. But this tragic fall from grace paled in comparison with the light of his enduring legacy. Despite his fate, Hannibal's spirit never truly was conquered. His saga was not that of conquests, but of an eternal perseverance. Today, as we trace his footprints across the annals of time, we ask ourselves, is victory just the conquest of lands, or is it about staking a claim in the memories of posterity? Every contour of his fate wound along these contradicting currents, as Rome's African nightmare Hannibal emerged as an icon that shook the very foundations of Roman invincibility. He was not just a man crossing mountains, but a mind transcending realities. If you enjoyed this video and gained any value from it, please like this video, as it really helps spread awareness of this great story. It really helps the channel as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great stories of amazing people and majestic lands. Thanks for watching.